All right, boys and girls. So here we are. The time has come for me to talk about this rebrand to TNA. TNA is back. And I know that I'm dropping this a good week after I probably should have. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Uh, those who follow me on a daily basis know I was out of town for my wedding. And when I reviewed Bound for Glory, I dis- I, I consider talking about this, but then I decided, you know what, this kind of needs its own upload uh, where I can really get into this. Now, I, I've been getting nonstop messages, tweets, people just wondering what my thoughts were uh, regarding the name change from Impact to TNA. So from what I've seen online in, in you know, about a week now, be close to a week. What I've seen online, there's there's quite a bit of optimism from the fans, but maybe not so much from the wrestling media and the podcasting world. Um, I think it's one of those things people immediately question and wonder why and why is it different this time. And, you know, I think you'll be pleased to know that I'm all for this change back to TNA. I think too often people think like smart wrestling fans and not from a business standpoint, a branding standpoint. So if we we rewind back to Bound for Glory and the video that they did at the very end of the show to announce the name change, I thought it was very well done. It was a little long, but it was very well done. Scott Demore was extremely cringe in his segment, but I can understand why he did it. I mean, who else is going to be in the ring and yell, we're back. And it was funny because as I'm watching this video, I'm thinking to myself, now, let me throw this out there. This was spoiled for me. And I use the term spoiled in quotes because it's nobody's fault that I didn't watch Bound for Glory as as it aired live. But I managed to, I managed to avoid all spoilers for the show. Except that when I woke up in the morning, I had two people message me, what are your thoughts on the return of TNA? <laughs> so by the time I got to it, when I was watching the show, I didn't get to it, you know, experience it the, in the same light that all of you did, where it was a surprise. But as I, so I'm, as I'm watching this segment, I think to myself, you know, if this were AEW, Tony Khan would be all over this, making this announcement, you know, he wouldn't let the wrestlers do it. And then... You know, a couple minutes later, there's Scott in the ring. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I mean, I, I do get it. You know, he 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 does run the place, so he, you know, it only makes sense. Uh, but but yeah, a little long, but very, very well done. And I've some I've seen some people say, Well, this is, you know, maybe this is the the new production upgrade. No, they they've always done really good videos like this. I'm I can pretty much bet my balls that the same teams that put these video packages together are not the ones who edit and and, and record the show. I'm whatever production team does the weekly show is not, not these people. I almost put my life on it. I do got to say too, they did a great job of keeping things under wraps. This was not anything that leaked out or even remotely leaked out, which is a little easier as impact wrestling, you know, if you're WWE, AEW, and you got these guys who are living, try to find out what you're doing behind the scenes and re- so they can be the first to report it on their websites. Um, it, it, it's a little easier to fly under the radar. Even shit, well, the crazy thing is even B- Billy Corgan couldn't keep the, the TV, uh, his TV deal under wraps. He was going to break the news himself, but that troll Nick Hausman somehow got a hold of the information. So Impact kept this very close to the vest. Okay, so my thoughts on this rebrand. Impact Wrestling was a brand that, in my opinion, never got off the ground. Now, clearly, there was a huge bump in live attendance. I'll say over the last, probably the past year or so, Maybe after COVID, but over the last year, huge bump in live attendance. So they're they're doing some things right. But in the impact era, television ratings were the lowest they have ever been in the history of the company. Internet buzz 
chatter was extremely low. The Impact Era featured the worst commentary they have ever had. And I'm talking, you know, I didn't mind Josh Matthews when they were TNA, but as they started transitioning over to the Access Era, he clearly didn't want to do that job anymore, and it's not, it, you could tell on TV. They were switching out color commentators. They had Matt Stryker and D'Lo at one point who were horrible. So the worst commentary they've ever had in the history of the company, worst ring announcing they've ever had, the worst music, and, and by that I mean background music behind segments, um, wrestlers theme songs, We Own the Night, the worst production value they have ever had. Bad social media. A Kenny Omega run that made the company look like absolute freaking idiots and didn't gain them a single new viewer while pretty much burying half their own roster. Remember they had Tony Khan coming on and doing the paid ads where he was just destroying Impact as a company and they never got their comeuppance for that? They weren't even good enough to get on AEW television during the Rich Swan and Kenny Omega feud. As Impact, this company lost their identity and the things that made them unique when they were TNA. They had no clue who their target audience was. TK and I used to talk about this. TW, I'm sorry, TK, I was thinking of Tony Khan. TW and I used to talk about this a lot. They did not have a target audience. There's a fan base for every target in this world, folks. If you're a rapper and you're a dentist and you just rap about working on people's teeth, there is an audience for it. It might be a small audience, but there you, you'll find an audience. As long as you target somebody, you can find a fan base. They had the biggest revolving door of stars due to short-term contracts. And I don't mean, you know, people coming and leaving because we didn't really have that, okay? We didn't have the guys, you know, Aaron Rex shows up and two minutes, two months later, he's gone. I mean, a revolving door of people on these short-term Six-month deals, come in and win a championship, and then leave. Failed projects like Aftershock, Between the Ropes. I know that's still a thing. I think it's a huge bust. BTI, that's still a thing. Huge bust. And I think to a degree, the Impact Plus and Ultimate Insiders, um, I, I know there's been positive with that as well. But just due to a lack of effective marketing plan for growth, I still see the fans promoting the Ultimate Insiders more than Impact does. They haven't promoted this thing on the television show once. Someone tried to argue with me the other day. Oh, yeah, they're always talking about the dollar and five dollar tiers. I'm like, no, they're not. We had wrestlers in the, in the Impact era, okay? We had wrestlers being killed off television and which... Now that Jimmy Jacobs is not around, I don't think we have to worry about that. We had community theater acting, bad cinematic features, a horrible signing in the Good Brothers that set the tag team division back for years. And they always had, I talked about the target audience, they always had this strategy of trying to bring back lapsed fans regardless of age even if they were not in the target demo, regardless of age, trying to bring back old fans rather than bring in new ones. They have also been content in appealing to and appeasing the fans who watch no matter what. You know, the Cody's, those, those fans that watch no matter what, who like everything. They have concerned themselves too much with those people which you have to to an extent, right? But despite all these things, they got away from the overall negative connotation, not because they were doing so many good things. It's because people stopped caring. Yes, they got away from the late paychecks, the backstage drama, but they're still to this day putting titles on people because they were in the WWE. 
Look at freaking Slammiversary. They still come off, and this some some of it's their social media, some of it's their booking. They still come off as desperate. It's just that nobody cares anymore. It's not cool to bash Impact anymore because you can bash AEW. So, yes, there are a lot of good things that they're doing, but and they they've done a lot of work to try to disassociate themselves with the negative stigma that was TNA. They've done a lot of work with that. But I think a lot of it is just because people do tend to forget over time and because their buzz was was very low. I mean, look at Bound for Glory. Was there was there much buzz online going into Bound for Glory? After Bound for Glory, yes. Going into it, there's people didn't even know the pay per view was coming. In the Impact era, they came off less like a big wrestling company and more like a televised indie company. And you remember the Twitch era. Some of these indie companies have bigger buzz than Impact did. They try to sell it as like, "Whoa, you know, come wrestle on our show. We're gonna pitch you, put you on." But after a while, we realized, "Oh, well, they're just trying to piggyback off these indie companies and." lessen their uh, uh I forgot the co- the name of the cost lessen <laughs> I can't remember the word I'm sorry lessen less you know lessening their costs they're using these other companies rings for s- but impact became a booking I said this a few times it became a booking for wrestlers the TNA era was different because in the early years, people wanted to be part of something big, part of something new, something that had a direction. It was a place people could come to show the world, hey, you slept on me and I'm going to show you why. That's not the impact era. There's a few people like that, yes. But there's a lot of people who just showed up because it was a booking. It was a payday. So now compare the difference from when they made the announcement that they were branding into Impact when they announced this recent one of switching back to TNA. When they branded into Impact Wrestling, it was out of necessity. They did it from a point of weakness. It was I was and I was there live at the show actually. It was Bruce Pritchard someone barely associated with the history of the company and has nothing to do with it now on TV announcing announcing that TNA is dead. The new name is Impact Wrestling. Now, I was on board with switching from the negative name. And, and frankly, to go back to what I said, I think they have gotten a lot away from a lot of the negativity. I think AEW has received so much negative press over the last year that Impact was able to operate under the radar, like I said. At at the end of the day, the name Impact was never popular with the fans, the sponsors, the overseas market, overseas markets. It held no weight. And I think all of the nostalgic shows that they have done have gone over very, very well for those reasons. When it comes to this TNA name, though, I've always said that there was a generation of fans who never knew the negativity of TNA, and those fans are now becoming the key demographic. So I'm going to say that again. When it comes to the name TNA, there is a generation of fans who never knew the negativity of that product, of those initials, of that company, because they were children. They are now becoming the key demographic. The point I was trying to make with Twitch was the logistics. They were trying to save on logistic, uh, logistical costs. So they were using other indie companies, rings and ring crews and setups and TV. That's what I was trying to get at. But I thought the, na- the branding to Impact Wrestling was really freaking lazy. Because that was already the name of the show. They weren't... They weren't really going into a new era. 
because they were afraid to distance themselves from TNA. They said, well, we got this library. We, we got this and this. They were afraid to rebrand totally. Now, what I have to say right now in this whole ramble that I have is very important. I, I, you have to listen to this. This is very important what I have to say. They have a rare opportunity that they will never have again and that no wrestling company will ever have again. And it's to establish themselves as the alternative product. A rare opportunity that nobody will have ever again to establish themselves as the alternative product. Now, what do I mean by that? AEW was doing that, and there's, they showed that there was a market for it. But then they became WWE light. They've added more and more bad comedy to the show with each and every week. It's becoming a bad version of WWE programming. So the alternative that they had established, that they had once established four or five years ago, whenever it was, is gone. Impact has a chance as TNA to become the alternative product. Now, how did they do that? Stop copying angles, matches, and lingo because you see and hear them on WWE TV. You know, championship opportunity is, is the latest. Stop the stupid social media posts. And I understand with social media, you have to have some kind of personality. And I understand the impact fans think it's funny and they laugh at it and it gets engagement. But it does zero to grow your company. It is the equivalent of me on Twitter posting a picture of a naked girl and getting 200 likes on it. It does nothing for my brand. Because it isn't my brand. These old videos, you know, Samoa Joe and Ric Flair and and uh, Jay Lethal. and It does nothing for you right now. Stop living in the past and allow this roster to establish themselves as the new TNA. If you sit there and keep trying to remind us that you had AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and Eli Drake and that Dennis Rodman was on TNA programming, you are doing a disservice to your current stars and their individual brands. WWE does not remind us on a weekly basis that they had Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and these people because there's no money in promoting the past when you're trying to build a future. They have failed to create a place that past wrestlers can be proud of and would be willing to be part of in the future. Because guess what? All those people want nothing to do with you. All these people that you're promoting and trying to remind us we're in the company, they want nothing to do with you. So my concern is rather than have a new vision that they're going to double down on nostalgia and employ anyone who's tied to the glory days of TNA. The ring announcing is going to be the same. They're going to cycle in more and more old wrestlers and try not to make a connection with the younger audience. And if they do that, they will fail. If they make it about the nostalgia and not about the future, it just and it just becomes a giant episode of Impact 1000, they will fail. But if they choose to create the alternative product and allow these wrestlers to be the stars of tomorrow, then they'll succeed. Folks, the Impact brand never was. It's not fun. It's not sexy. It was a half-assed attempt at a rebrand, as I said, because they were too afraid to get away from what TNA was. They never went all in on the new vision or on a new vision. The fact is, Impact is still not a free agent destination. And I was hoping when Frankie Kazarian came through, that would open the door for wrestlers to say, hey, there's, some, there's, there's something else out there. But it continues to be a place that people have to go, not that they want to go. But they can change all this. 
but right now it's still a company that people have to settle for. They have an opportunity now to be something that people want to be a part of. And if they if they do bring in wrestlers from WWE, AEW, and allow them to reinvent themselves, then you're building something. Because there's always a bigger return on inve- return on investment than trying to recycle old versions of characters. The original Dirty Dango, um, Big Con. I used to say Matt Cardona all the time that I felt Impact wants him to be Zack Ryder and not Matt Cardona. But if you let people come in and say, hey, this is a place where you can start over, start over with a new name, like they did with Steve Macklin, like they did with W. Morrissey. There's success when that happens, when they allow a wrestler to come in and do what they want to do. But if they're afraid of bringing in a wrestler because his new name and new gimmick are nothing like their previous ones, they're going to fail. So people ask, why is this rebrand different? Why is it different this time? Well, for one thing, the show is good now. When they rebranded to Impact Wrestling, the show was horrible, all-time horrible, all-time horrible. Not my opinion. The show stunk. The show's good now. The company has a little momentum after Bound for Glory. And for years, I've been talking about doing a soft rebrand after Bound for Glory or soft rebrand at the top of the year. They're kind of doing both here. They're they're making their rebrand last over several months. And this is this is a smart thing. That is the way to do it. This rebrand as opposed to the impact rebrand is breathing life into a lot of the fans. Do I think it'll bring in new fans? No, not just on its head by itself, but if there's a shift in mindset and they're truly committed to updating the product, the people will come. The wrestlers will come. If they continue to keep people around who are bad at their jobs, just because they're family then we're going to have the same issues that we've been having up till now that are going to stunt their growth. It looks like visually they want to do a complete overhaul. And like I've said, put good people in important positions. Do not cut corners. Put more of a concentrated effort into creating new stars and elevating the ones you current have currently have instead of trying to grab people off the free agent market. AEW is failing right now because they have made it about who's going to show up at the next pay-per-view, who's the next free agent signing. And they've gotten away from their identity. The identity that they once established, they have gotten away from that. Impact can step in now as TNA. And Bruce Pritchard, TNA was never dead. But Impact was dead on arrival. The name can change, but the game has to. Don't half-ass it like when you like it when don't half-ass it like when you became Impact. Do it right this time. There has never, never, never been a greater opportunity to establish yourself as the alternative. Don't just talk about it be about it.